G'day and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share with you a build that I actually finished at the end of last year and um, finished off some of the final details in January and then um, sort of lifted my display cabinet for a while because really it was just a test of a whole lot of ideas that I wanted to try out on World War One aircraft so that later on when I built a really big wing nut wings kit I um, I'd already sort of mastered, hopefully, some of the little tricks and some of the methods you needed to do things like, you know, the um, the rib shading and cowling and all oh, and rigging and all kinds of things. I wanted to sort of get up to speed. And I thought, why not do it on something easy? Because this is only like a little one shekel kit. But the result um, was much better than I thought, and I was encouraged to um, take it along to my club. In fact, I'd run out of kits to show for this month it was about three or four months ago so I, I took along a little iron decker and i put it in the monthly competition just so basically i you know could fill my space and keep my points up but i think we won the first prize <laughs> can you believe that it's a typical airfix box it's only it's only little you know and um and they have the painting guide on the back there which is um pretty spot on and also gives you all the decor placement so it's as easy as that and it's just on there's you know a bit of blurb on the side they're lovely little kits. I mean, I grew up with Airfix. My first kit was an Airfix Spitfire in the bag. Alrighty, well, let's have a look inside the box because I did take some photographs of the sprues when I first got this because a few people were interested and they wanted to know, you know, what colour it was like. And I was blown away. It's so clean. Let's have a look. So those were the sprues. Let's have a look at the instructions. Now it's new Airfix. This is brand new, um, brand new mold. This one. This was um, I think 2016. I have to double check. Don't quote me. It's, it's very new, but uh, 215, 216, something like that. And um, you get a bit of colour in the new Airfix uh, instructions, and they're, they're all very pretty and there's you know, the usual things and the usual things. But look, what I want to look at is um, the drawings. The way they do them now is that. Um, Things that are going in that have been done before, they're sort of red and then there's grey and these lovely 3D drawings, they're really nice. They're really easy to follow. It's 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 so good. Everything's marked with Humbrol colours as you go through. So I went and found out what the Humbrol colours were. They're fairly easy to look up online and I wrote down what I needed from my uh, my paint uh, stash. And of course I've, I painted this, well I painted this mainly in Tamiya I think in life colour. Yeah, more of that later. So um, again, you know, this is the bit you've done, this is the bit you're adding, it's all very obvious, all goes together really well. Uh, there really was no fit issues at all. This kit clicked together. There was no filling required anywhere. Seamless, absolutely seamless. Everything just fitted in. It'd be like a bloody Bandai kit, you could just about click it together. The fit was that good. But everything went together well. The instructions are very clear. There were no traps at all. It was very easy. I painted as I went. I followed the instructions and I painted as I went. You'll see that shortly when you, you see my construction, that each, each part could easily be painted and then put in. It's very modular and easy to follow. Now, there were a couple of props. I forget why there was a reason. I think it's probably between the, the version 2 or the version 3. And um, even with the pilot, but I haven't really used him. Um, I might paint him up one day and I might use him. But there you go. And then they show you the dihedral. There's none. <laughs> World War One monoplate. Flat. And then they give you a very comprehensive rigging diagram. And I did most of this. I did most of this. I, I didn't put the tiny little pieces on the, the tail here for the, um, for the rear stabilizers, mainly because in my exuberance, and it's so fine and delicate, it has the little, little horns there, and they're actually built into the fuselage. And um, I managed to push it down hard while I was sanding on it once I put the halves together, and I snapped off my horns. Oops. Uh, I think I managed to find them and glue them back on, but they were so fragile, I was too scared to actually go and put the, um, the rigging there. But I did all the rest of it, and I'll show you that in a sec. The rigging actually wasn't that hard. I was um, quite surprised at how easy it all went together. There you go. There's the end of it. That's a, a sort of blank there. Okay, enough of this. Let's have a look at the construction.
as I said, I uh, started by actually priming everything using Tamiya Rattle Cam because basically the whole plane is this sort of beige colour. And that gave me a good solid base for then adding things later, like the metallic colour for the cowling there, painting the seat brown, and slowly building everything up as little sub-assemblies, you know, doing the joystick and everything like that. Now, um, the halves fitted together absolutely spot on, but they did require some sanding across the top there once you got the two halves together, and that's where I managed to break those little guide horns. But everything went together spot on. It was just so easy. It, you know, it was just a joy. I had a smile on my face the whole time I was building it. And there's the um, the undercarriage. Now that was I was able to paint all those little struts and things, the colour of the little grain separately, and then put it together. The um, the prop I laminated by putting little strips of um, of, of um, fine tape on there and painting it a light colour and then a dark colour. And I got a sort of little lamination. I'll do more of that another day. Show you exactly how to do lamination. Now the the wings. This was very important. I wanted to get this effect. See here. These are photos of a of a nine decker replica. And you can see that it, from underneath, the um, you get a shadow on the red, but on the top, the ribs are shiny. See, it's shadow on the bottom, shiny on the top. So you've got all this sort of two different things happening. So I masked up the ribs using a little 04 millimeter um, tape there, and then I sprayed to try and get the effect dark and light. So there you go, there's the top, there's the bottom. And um, hopefully I've got the kind of effect that I wanted, where things are kind of shiny and then things are kind of light. Um, sort of worked. Uh, the guys at the model club said it was spot on, so uh, must have got close. So there she is. Now it was decal time, basically, at this stage, and it all seemed rather obvious, but oops, big bloody mistake. I put the top decal for the little, yeah, that coloured band on the top, on the bottom, and the bottom deck on the top. So when I put the side pieces on, they didn't join. And I had to make up a little piece, and then I managed to hand paint it. Oh, it was all my own gaffer. Now, the rigging, I used Easy Line 0.15 millimeter stuff, and that just went in like a dream because you can stretch it, you can hold it, tap it with a super glue. The rigging actually was very, very easy. I'll go into that in more detail another day. But um, I simply drilled holes in the wings, ran the Easy Line through, tapped it off with a little bit of um, CA glue, and there you go. It was all finished. I was pretty happy about that. There she is, my Airfix Iron Dickhead, a uh, Decker. <laughs> it's a lovely little kit. I mean, it really was a joy to build, and it was only for me to test those ideas. And yet, in the end, it um, it won me a, uh, a first place. So, um, highly recommend it. Lovely little kit. I'm going to buy another one, actually, down the track, paint it up a slightly different livery, and I might even go a bit further, because one thing I didn't do that I was... Um, sort of hasn't to do with this scale is the on the cowling you're supposed to have that beet aluminium sort of look it has little sort of little squiggles and everything i didn't do that um because it would have been so fine i do have an iron decker 130 second scale wing at wings and i will be trying that technique out larger so if i master it at the larger scale i might be able to use the method and go down small scale but anyhow there you go airfix iron dickhead a de dickhead <laughs> well it's a monoplane and it's a fokker <laughs> So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.